a new box. Yeah, that's that's that thunderstorm gray. I've went on the record a couple times saying I really like that color. <laughs> that gonna be uh, your trade? Ooh, look at there. So that's the box that I mentioned last week that I was gonna get from another distributor. Uh, I ain't ever had one with a hutch already installed on the truck. Yeah. I've uh, sold a couple hutches and installed a couple hutches um, and had, of course, your box that we put together here. Right. You know, but I've never just had one on the truck together. But I really like this box. Uh, I like the way our hutch um, comes all the way out. I like the way that we have a protector here. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a couple of people ask me why they why they put a protector here. We all know that we're gonna we're gonna scar up or ding or something going into especially going into a hutch because mm -hmm. it, it becomes like a little work table usually. Um, it's usually got your computer and stuff in there too. But there's been time and time again I see where somebody's changing out a pulley on whether it be a compressor or. Uh, power steering pump or something that's just the perfect spot to and most of the time your work tables are piled Ooh, of yeah. stuff i mean it's just a, even a nice clean shop it, it happens at least once you know in a week mm -hmm. to where everything just piles up so that's just a quick overflow so i like the hutch lot i like the way that it goes off when you close the the lid so there's no there's no reason to worry about whether you know you left it on or not Boy, if a fella likes orange, you got them hooked up right here. Orange box, neck light, stream light, hoses, fender covers. We try to do the color thing. Another even, flashlight. Even when we do the cart bundles, which if we can start getting several carts back in stock, um, we're going to start doing cart bundles again. Uh, but, yeah, we try, we try to do color because most of the time if somebody's going to make this big of a purchase, they're doing it because they like the color yeah. uh, of the box. You know, they they hardly ever buy this big of a box, especially with the prices that they run. Usually, you're gonna like the color. So that's cool, no doubt. I'm almost willing to bet that if I'd have had your toolbox and say green, you'd have been like, yeah, that's that's a nice box, but that's not my color. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not gonna spend that much for that. <laughs> so <laughs> same true. way with this, and I've had a lot of interest on this box. Um, I've had a lot of people looking it over have a lot of people that have priced touches just because they didn't they didn't know realize. how they looked well it's not that they haven't seen a picture of it but they haven't seen it in person and i guess it's my fault three years in and i haven't had a hutch on the truck that's probably my fault but they look at a picture and they're like yeah okay but they don't realize how much it actually changes the look mm -hmm. of the box plus the use of the box i mean that's a good deep hutch yep. and it's, it's going to give you that much more room now, if you stuff it packed full to where you can barely open the lid without stuff falling out, then yeah, you just all you did was create a storage bin. But mm -hmm. if you use it right, it, it, it really turns in good. That's nice. Now, the only thing I will say is these here, they come like a, as a magnet. Um, if it was me when I bought it, uh, and I'm, I'm leaving it that way, that way if somebody likes it, removable, it, it can be. But if it was me, I'd go ahead and put some 3M tape. That way it won't just because somebody's gonna walk up and grab it and then it's gonna start sliding. Yeah. But that's the only thing, I, I like that it is magnetic, but if it was me, I'd go ahead and put some type of 3M tape or something on there. Mm -hmm. 3M tape can always be removed, just a little bit of a trouble, but it can always be removed. That is right. But, good storage. Well, that's a pretty neat color on that box, even. That that thunderstorm gray is a, is a popular color and they made it even more i've had i've had toolboxes in this color and if you'll remember the box that's at my house with my stuff in it is a thunderstorm gray with blue trim but i really like this black trim against it too it yeah. kind of gives it a good contrast which i guess we like this color so much we uh when we went a storm a couple of years back damaged our roof we actually went back with a, a almost similar color to for our tin and didn't even realize it at the mm -hmm. time but uh yeah i like that color that which that's the, this is a 2s box that's a 4s box so you can see the difference in the drawers and stuff we went over that before too mm -hmm. so it does have a little bit of difference in everything um i've had a couple of people say they wish they wouldn't have put such a big emblem there some people like it some people don't um, that's really choice if you if you know 
anybody really that's ever messed with any kind of body shop work or even even just everybody should know how to get those off without scratching. I mean, they make oh stuff God. that you can put on you can there. You take a it. piece of dental floss and put behind that and yeah. run off shield cone. But that's like, we have a lot of people that really like the uh, badging here. Mm -hmm. Then you got some people that hate that. But now, that, that to me, that all goes back to the type of people that used to take all their badging off the vehicles. Yeah. You know, and they would even go as far as taking the handles and stuff out of the doors and uh, the tailgates and that some people like that slick, smooth mm -hmm. look and that's the same way with toolboxes. And when you're spending this much, you're gonna make it the way you like it. So okay. I'm okay True. with it. If that's what they like, I'm perfectly fine with it. These have gained popularity this week and on my route. I had one guy have me order uh, that because he does a lot of drag racing and stuff and, and he wanted the quarter inch and the three eighths and Just off of that we have sold probably five right. um, I let him one of the guys wants it. Uh, he's already uh, Claimed it, but he was gonna let me show it on the video. Uh, he said he didn't need it this weekend anyway but I wanted to show one of the main reasons they like it is because of how easy it is to adjust. Mm -hmm. And then it's it's kind of funny how many newer techs don't understand why this would come in handy to where an impact wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, from what they're telling me, they just like it because it's quicker for them to, and it won't mess up their gaskets and everything. And it's, you know, yeah. So they, they really like it. Um, my ATV shops that work on a lot of four-wheelers, four dirt bikes, stuff like that, they really like these as well. Right. So they, they've been selling real good. Um, and some guys don't even know why you'd ever use that. You know, that, <laughs> that goes back to different different levels of, uh, or ge different generations, I guess I should say. Well, I think that's kind of the nostalgia factor with drag racing too. Like ever since the days of old, when you started watching yeah. drag racing, everybody would pull their valve covers off with a tea handle like that, yeah. you know, with a spinner in it. And, well, you know, they used to have the ones that, that had like the, uh, it would come down and come out and mm -hmm. over. And those things you had to be careful because you'd punch something real quick with them. And then yeah. um, I had a guy that I worked with, he used to train spark plugs with it. You know, that's, that's how he did spark plugs. Um, you know, it's funny how you get used to using whatever tool you was taught with to do that job. Yeah. And then it's hard to, it's hard to break that habit, even though something else may work better, you know? Yeah. Well. And his thing was just a slight vibration on a spark plug could, could break the porcelain there. And, and I get it, um, but you're not really just hammering down on it either. I mean, yeah. usually you can do it and never hammer. But I've also seen a lot of people just use a regular ratchet and yeah. they'll take and they'll unlock it and get it right there. And then mm -hmm. they can do like a speed Spin, handle motion as around, well. Yeah. yeah, that's just hold your extension and, and get going with it. But uh, I don't know what everybody's gonna do with them. Um, but they they wanted them. They put in orders for them. So have at it. Well, that's your job to sell tools. That's right. right you know, uh, I did a lot of ex a lot of explaining on those. You know, it, it took a lot of work to explain to people why impacts ain't always the right tool for the job on some of it. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, especially with cork gaskets and stuff like that. They just they don't understand. Um, but if you've ever worked on any older model cars that had the uh, aluminum valve covers and stuff that break the ears crack real easy uh, i'm not saying that's the best tool but you better be careful of the impact on those two because yeah, exactly uh, i personally from first-hand experience know that they will crack those quick mm -hmm. and yes they're you know the the manuals usually tell you there's a certain order to tighten the bolts and stuff like that and that becomes important too if you're not careful because uh, mm -hmm. if you put it in a bind it'll crack those old ones pretty quick but Luckily, it's pretty easy to aluminum weld and get it back together. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of tricks to the trade that when something messes up, there's a lot of unique repairs. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen everything from ways to fix scratches and, and to, like I said, on the bow covers and stuff. We had a really good interior guy that used to come and he would use, you know, one of a heat gun. And if there was a scratch on a dash or something, normally the only reason you could see the scratch is because of the discoloration. Mm -hmm. And he'd heat it up and it's like that dye would just run it in. Wow. And then the scratch was going. I mean, there's no telling how many. Uh, when we were doing dash recalls and stuff, center consoles and stuff would get scratched just randomly. You know, you'd be super careful, but mm -hmm. it don't take much for a screwdriver right. to slip. And, and he could come he'd come in and fix a couple and then he pretty much showed us, hey, look, this is how you want to do it. 
and you basically take a pocket screwdriver he showed us to bend the end over that way it had a good roll like a smooth rolled edge on it and you would basically uh, smooth the scratch back smooth that way it's not you can't feel it and then heat it up and you I mean you literally could not tell the difference it was pretty pretty cool pretty and we got neat. to doing it a lot on used cars and stuff that would come in nicked and mm -hmm. stuff but I did have a uh, caller last night I, I'd already cut my phone off but he messaged me he's gonna be a Toyota tech uh, he's in California and he was kind of asking what techs he uh, tools he would needed to, to go into that industry um, Pretty much all brands start with the same tools. Good ratchet, good set of sockets. Um, you won't need as many standard. Uh, I can't tell you how many times um, I used a standard because I can't remember. I had very mm -hmm. few. It was enough that I didn't even have them in my, I had them in the cases in, in the drawer yeah. below. So, you know, good set of uh, metrics, short and deep, uh, good, good ratchet, impact, and, you know, pliers and stuff like that. But. There's no really just special tools until you get on into it, and then usually that's going to be if you're working on a Prius, it takes a different um, takes a different spark plug uh, socket, and then on some of the axles and stuff, they're different as well, mm -hmm. but not a whole lot. And I don't remember everything, but if I could go back, I'd buy picks earlier because yeah. a lot of times I would use um, a screwdriver where a pick would have did a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you get into doing a lot of wiring, go ahead and get you a good deep pin and set instead of trying to use paper clips and everything yeah, else. Yeah, that's true. Um, the paper clips will get you aggravated real quick. Uh, <laughs> you will hate wiring for it, but yeah. Other than that, um, just the just the normal. Um, I actually didn't start off with ratchet wrenches just because ratchet wrenches are usually more. But if you wanted to, you could just start with a good set of uh, regular uh, wrenches. I guess regular combination wrenches and then later on step into the uh, ratchet wrenches and stuff like that I, I'd probably just say go slow with it yeah don't jump all the way in and get every bit of it at first because I mean you're gonna need your screwdrivers you're gonna need your pliers you're gonna need your ratchets but you can make do with other stuff um, for a little while and when mm -hmm. I say other stuff I don't really mean you know use a pair of pliers for a hammer but you know you can right. you can get by you'll see what you're using the most of off of what you're doing the most um, you know, if you're starting off in the quick lube, you really don't need nothing but a good flashlight. Um, and depending on what all the quick lube does, but usually a good flashlight, a good ratchet, and I think it's a 14 millimeter socket is the, uh, the drain plugs. I think that's right. I can't remember. Um, you know, and that's a, that, you can do that all day long. Mm -hmm. But now if you're going to be doing a lot of rotations and the shop don't provide you a good impact, uh, then you might want to get a good impact yeah. and we could argue all day long whether you need to go air or battery um, we all have different opinions there Toyota oh, if I was doing tires and the shop had an air compressor there ain't no way I'd well I'd run batteries I know. agree um, but somebody's gonna disagree with us but I agree and the thing about it is Toyota depending on the dealership you, you start at Toyota from the factory you're supposed to use a torque stick on every wheel mm -hmm. they're real big on that if they come down because toyota does like every other brand they'll come down and actually watch your process and if you're doing it wrong they'll actually get on to you about it um and we all know the reasons you know if you over tighten it it could cause brake um vibration and not only that but multitude of reasons you right. know so they recommend using or not i guess it's not a recommendation use a torque stick but on that when you start using that battery all day it's going to start going down and I know that they've got better about when they start losing their torque they just go off but a lot of your a lot of your older you know, management's going to say air all day long and and it's probably going to last longer because you got to think you're doing four to five lug nuts or I guess it's five lug nuts five to six lug nuts on every wheel and then you're talking four wheels a car or times we used to do 100 cars a day in our uh, quick loop so I, I could say that I, I don't Our, it's just cheaper it's easier it's well, lighter it's stronger batteries don't go down batteries don't go bad you don't have to recharge them I, I will say this also but like I said all that you know but just the lasting of the tool because mm -hmm. I don't know 
whether it be Maco, Snap-on, uh, Mac, Cornwell, Milwaukee, whatever it may be, uh, earthquake from Harbor Freight, that's a lot of use for yeah. electric impact. And you gotta think about that electric switch cutting on and off all day. So I'm gonna say you're gonna have switch problems before too long if you're not having actual motor problems. So mm -hmm. uh, I see them all break. I mean, I have a Milwaukee down here that's broke now. Um, that's a real popular Milwaukee. They get used a bunch. Yeah. Um, they're nice if you can keep the batteries from you know falling off of them. They're real nice. Uh, but in the same aspect of that, you're going to have that warranty issue, and they there you're going to be without one. So that's true. As long as you keep, and that's the main thing. Make sure if you're working in a quick leave, you keep these guns greased and old. Mm -hmm. um, they do have a grease port up front for a reason. Um, that's not just so the factory could put grease in there one time. It, it does need grease. It does need old. It don't need over old. Uh, I have seen complications of that. Uh, plus, it just makes a mess on your hand when you pull the trigger. So, right. and I haven't really been to a good shop yet that hasn't had water problems. It's like the water dryers just as soon as they get installed, they stop working. I don't know. Um, we've ch we've we've done them where we put them on the racks with the beads inside of it. That works for a little while. Next thing you know, you're you're tools become a water spigot you know and, mm -hmm. and it, just keep them old keep them greased other than that i mean just the normal day tools and stuff like that but right i know i like them better i just lie ass man well um our new one i'm i we everybody asked us when we first come out and i don't know if you remember when you bought your bought yours um I, I think you bought one, and I think Kevin ended up buying one or, or something. Anyways, I had a whole display of them. I just got back from Expo, Expo had a bunch of different colors. Mm -hmm. Sold all five in a couple of days, but everybody was asking us why Maco would still be coming out with new air tools when the battery market is growing so fast and so strong. Um, and, and now it's not even a question. It's, you know, oh, that's because everybody's using air again and stuff like that. I mean, even your service trucks. I talked to a service guy yesterday. He works at a, a transportation company and he goes out and does a lot of service calls on trucks and stuff. Uh, and I asked him, I said, do you use more air or battery? He said, air but all the way. He said, yes, yeah, a little bit more trouble mm -hmm. to get the compressor to start up and, and stuff. And he had just had a compressor issue. That's why I asked him, you know. Uh, he said, I, I'd rather have my air all day, every day. He said, it, it always works. He said, as long as the compressor is on, it works. Yeah. So, you know, everybody's got a different opinion. Somebody's going to argue that, that air, uh, air is just the old timer stuff, but, you know, it, it works. Like our air hammers. <laughs> I mean, an air hammer with the right air pressure, you, you can't beat it. There's just no beating it. And, and a lot of things that you, you pay attention to, uh, a lot of people ain't getting the max work out of their air hammer because they're not looking on the box to see what the recommended air pressure is. Mm -hmm. They're also not looking to see what recommendation air hose to use. Uh, and, and all that matters, right? So make sure you read on these tools because if you get an impact, especially the 2779 and you're not happy with it, I'm almost willing to bet you that you've got something wrong, whether it be right. air pressure. Not enough, big enough line running something, to it, something because i have not ever seen somebody unhappy with one of those mm -hmm. now i'm not saying it's not possible i'm not saying that you won't get it out of the box and it not work the first time because we've all had that happen with something i haven't had it happen with a impact but we've all had it something so if that's the case get with your dealer pretty quick yeah. and get it took care of i always tell everybody when they when they get one of their impacts from me go in hook it up to the air or put oil in it first, yeah. hook it up to the air. Run it through forward and reverse. Make sure the switches are good, make sure the, the tr trigger's good. Uh, I've had one die grinder burn me to where it just you pull the button, doesn't work, you know. But because I tell everybody, go try it right mm -hmm. quick. Um, and, and some of them, if they're on the fence of it, I'll be like, hey, you know what? Take this in back in there and try it. Sold so many drill bits that way. Here, just yeah. try this drill bit. Okay, hey, I want the whole thing. Mm -hmm. that, that same company I'm talking about that road tech on um, they needed drill bits and I had him uh, I had him take it in there and use it and the next thing I know the owner of the company was out buying two sets of drill bits you know and that's two three hundred something dollar sales just right. bam bam so the fact that that happened I mean that just proves um, another thing that a lot of people's talking about that do alignments is the camber caster kit so 
if you're doing a lot of alignments. I know that there's different ways to do it. It's all about those tools that make the job easier, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I gotta get back in there and get some work done. It's yeah. We all gotta get through, the, get through the day, right? You stay, you stay my mess in there. Yeah, well, <laughs> so. not a good way to start the day out, but you'll get it took care of. All right, guys, like always, thanks for hanging out with us. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes are down here. If you're not subscribed, take your finger and click that button. You guys have a great weekend. See ya.